But I'm joined from the Sydney CBD by the leader of the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party, Robert Borsak. Thanks for joining us, uh, Robert. Uh, uh, you don't think that Gladys Berejiklian is out of the woods yet? No, I think she's a long way from being out of the woods in relation to all of this, Chris. You know, the way these things play out. Uh, whoever thought back in March that we'd be seeing this going on right now, that there'd be public displays of, uh, uh, you know, talking about bringing her down... Uh, wanting ballots and all those sorts of things. It's all a direct flow on, of course, of the abysmal politically, abysmally bad political way she's handled this abortion bill, trying to ram it through the lower house, which she did, and then trying to ram it through the upper house. Uh, I just left Parliament House about 15, 20 minutes ago, and they're back in negotiations again. She's a long way from being out of the woods on this one. A lot of it will, of course, depend on what actually happens today and tomorrow as the bill uh, starts to come on. We start at 2.30 today. And once we start talking about amendments, which is what we're going to roll straight into. Indeed. We'll throw forward in just a moment. But firstly, let's go back. I mean, this is a conscience vote. It's not something where you'd have a lot of party political games played out. How is it then that Gladys Berejiklian has managed to make this uh, a problem for her leadership? Well, I think, I think in the end of the day, um, people see this for what it is. Yes, it was a conscience vote, as it was for our party, but... Uh, it's pretty plain now and what we're seeing and, and what the stuff we're hearing around the corridors there that uh, she wants to make sure that uh, she retains the numbers in the party room. Uh, she staved off an, uh, an attack this morning uh, by, on, on a couple of bases, obviously by uh, seeking public support from the key uh, potential offenders, uh, also calling on a uh, public ballot, in other words, a hands up in the room. Uh, but my, my mail on the whole thing is that if there'd been a secret ballot, the left couldn't guarantee the numbers for her. Well, she needs to get some amendments uh, to this bill uh, yeah. through the Upper House. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that the bill will be amended, in particular to curb late-term abortions and to uh, specifically make render illegal uh, gender selection abortions? Look, right, as I sit here right now, Chris, I just don't know. Um, I know when I left Parliament House 15, 20 minutes ago, they were deep in negotiation with the, with the National Party left. That's where they were at. And uh, as far as I know, uh, there are concessions to be made, but uh, they wouldn't include me in those negotiations for obvious reasons. They're keeping it within the Liberal National Party uh, coalition government. Um, if this, this doesn't come this off... because you oppose the bill uh, outright. Is there uh, anything you would be inclined to do to help uh, Gladys Berejiklian? Well, well, no, no, we don't, oppo we don't oppose the bill. I don't oppose the bill. I support the bill. Um, so, I beg your pardon, I, I do oppose the bill and support the amendments, that's right. And uh, if the amendments come up uh, and if they're to our liking, well, then we will, of course, vote for the amendments and hopefully uh, bring the bill on and get it done. So why wouldn't Gladys Berejiklian be talking to you? Well, as a matter of practice, she doesn't talk to me. Um, that's pretty much been the case since the, uh, before the election. We've had no line of communication with this government going right back to 2015. Uh, when they simply didn't need us for four years. Um, and since then, all we've copped is abuse off them. And it's a little hard to understand, but that's the way it is. That's a bizarre way uh, to try and run a government when you need the numbers uh, in the upper house. Uh, and it's all going to play out over the next uh, 24 hours. What's your best guess as to where we're going to be this time tomorrow, Robert Borsak? I think the concessions will be made. Uh, she's blinked again this morning. I think some of those amendments will go through, although, Chris, I can't tell you right now which ones will go through or what exact form they will take. Uh, and she'll manage to calm the crossbench down in the lower house. But what we didn't see coming was uh, the potential for two or maybe three in the upper house going to the crossbench over this as well. That would make it twice as bad for her. Not only would she have to worry about getting my support and, and uh, perhaps One Nation support, but uh, she wouldn't even have the numbers for her own people up there to get anything through. It, it, it absolutely screams at some point in time soon for a change in Premier.